Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and as we continue with the Ghostbusters movie series, I'm going to start with the sequel called Ghostbusters 2. It's a follow up to the first movie. It stars Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, Harold Ramis, Sigourney Weaver, Annie Potts, Ernie Hudson, Rick Moranis, Peter Nicole from the TV show. Alec McBeal, as well as the movie Bean and many others. Harris Yulin, David Magolis, Philip Baker Hall, Chief Moran, and Kurt Fuller. It's written once again by Dan Aykroyd and Harold Ramis, and it's once again directed by Ivan Reitman. The movie begins after five years battling against Boozer and a state puck marshmallow man. A restraining order has forbidden Peter Bankman, Ray Stans, Winston Zedmore, and Egon Spengler, all played by Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, Ernie Hudson, and Harold Ramis, from working as the Ghostbusters. And prior to that, they had to find other jobs to work with, such as Ray owning a book store called Ray's Occult, and performs at children's birthday parties with Winston. Meanwhile, Egon had conducted experiments at the Institute for Advanced Theological Research. Dana Barrett, um, play, who was played by Sigourney Weaver, had broke up with Peter some time ago before marrying another guy, and Peter now hosts a local TV show called The World of the Psychic, who also has you know, many books you know, based on that. So Dana, who's now a divorced mother of an eight months old baby named Oscar, had works in a restoration department at the Manhattan Museum of Art. Strange things starts to happen when Oscar's baby's carriage takes off by itself with Oscar in it and stops in the middle of the First Avenue, while Dana's boss, Jean-Claude Poha, who's played by Peter McCall, is restoring a painting of the 16th century tyrant named Beagle von Humberberg, which the painting comes to life. Beagle wants to live again by taking over Oscar's body. So Beagle takes complete control of Genosis and, and orders Genosis to get, to get Dana to cooperate. He also has his own agenda, so he wants, wants Dana, of course, to because he wants to be in love with her. But when Peter, Ray, and Egon try to help Dana, they are arrested and put it on trial for violating the restraining order. When the ghosts of the killer Squosey brothers show up at the courtroom, the judge is forced to remove the restraining order against the guys. And once they finally trap the Squosey brothers inside the ghost trap, they say that one line in the film, all three of them, yeah, they said, Two in the box! Ready to go! They be fast and they be slow. <laughs> that was a good one. So once the Ghostbusters is back on the team, the judge decided to take off the restraining order, and they decided to reopen themselves with Mayor's assistant Jack Heidermeyer, who tries to slow them down any way he can, because he believes the Ghostbusters are fraud, who will hurt the mayor's chances of becoming the governor of New York. So the Ghostbusters and their lawyer. Louis Tully refused to stop by Jack, but when Jack has the Ghostbusters put in the Parkville Mental Hospital, there is a eclipse, and Janice had kidnapped Oscar for Beagle. So after all of that, the mayor wants the Ghostbusters on the job, and fires Jack and had the Ghostbusters released trying to rescue Oscar from Beagle, while he intends to make uh, as hard as possible for them to stop. Especially when there's, of course, the ghosts attacking from the tunnels, as well as um, from the Titanic that you saw in that one scene, and anything. <laughs> well, now it's not nearly as good as the original Ghostbusters. Well, yes, because even though it's still one of the best out of the bunch, but... I still enjoy the sequel nevertheless because there were a lot of funny scenes and there were very memorable lines there that kind of falls back around at you. 
And I know there was <laughs> a lot of funny stuff in it too. Um, I did like Peter Nicole's character in the world too. I thought he was great. I mean, this is way before he was in the TV show Ali Mobile. So yeah, he went on to do a lot of stuff. But actually, he was in the movie called uh, Sophie's Choice you know, with um, Kevin Klein and Meryl Streep. So that's when I knew who he was back then. But I also forgot to mention. Because that was a good film, too. It's great to see all the cast again, too. I mean, especially, you know, the rest of the Ghostbusters team. So it was great. I think, you know, it was... It was the kind of sequel we really needed. I mean, we didn't expect it to have one, but I'm glad we did. I mean, it had mixed reviews from critics, but it didn't bother me much. Well, maybe one from Roger Ebert, who said, I have yet to meet someone who actually loved Ghostbusters 2. Well, guess what? And if he was alive to know this, I was probably one of them who likes Ghostbusters 2. Uh, no, there were some people out there that liked Ghostbusters too, and there are others that you know would feel the same way. But that's okay. But it's fun, no problems. Uh, there were some cameos in the movie, including Cheese Moran. Yeah, I noticed that too, and Philip Baker Hall had one. It wasn't in the movie much. It was only one scene. And there was that big scene where they were going to, <laughs> where they used the Statue of Liberty. Yeah, just to attack that ghost. Yeah, I know, the Statue of Liberty. You know, it's just kind of messed up at first, but it was kind of cool. While they were playing the song Higher and Higher. And, <laughs> and I like the scene with Harold Ramis saying, you know, when they were dressed as construction workers, you know, the Ghostbusters team, he was saying, Yo! And yeah, Rick Moranis' character actually dressed as a Ghostbuster later on in the movie. Yeah, I thought, for the most part, that was hilarious. <laughs> you know, I actually went to go see this movie in theaters uh, back in 1989. And we saw it in Glendale, by the way, at Man Feeders. So it was a great experience. Because I didn't see the first movie in theaters because I wasn't even born yet. Because I only saw it on home video back in the day. But I would watch it over and over. Such a fun movie. Um, like I said before, it's not as good as the first movie, but it's still worth watching. <laughs> so definitely take this movie a chance. I think you're going to enjoy it no matter what. So anyway, I give Ghostbusters 2 3.5 stars. I'm Joseph A. Saboros, and I'll see you later. Bye.